My name is Rima Zaman, and I am the author of the memoir, I Am Yours, and here is my story. When my husband and I got married, he announced that he wouldn't be buying me a ring because he didn't want to participate in blood diamonds. I remember biting back my words that not all diamonds have to be blood diamonds, but I bit back my words because I knew better than to speak. I knew that were I to speak, he would only use my words against me as proof of my insolence, proof of my ingratitude, proof of my selfishness, proof of my misbehavior. So I kept quiet. We were married on January 4th, 2010, in the dead of the New York winter. Once married, we moved onto his sailboat, which was parked on the ice with a beautiful view of the Statue of Liberty. Mind you, it was a sailboat, not a houseboat, 29 feet in length. It was tiny, and we didn't have any heating or plumbing. To stay warm, he figured out how to line the entire inside of the sailboat with electric heaters and space blankets. Uh, space blankets. Space heaters. <laughs> electric blankets and space heaters. I'm pretty sure we were a fire hazard. To cook our meals, we had a hot plate and a pressure cooker, and life was sweet and simple. He had recently purchased a half-burned barn in upstate New York using bank loans and a hefty gift from his mother. He had this goal of turning this barn, which had been eaten up in, by a fire in the 80s. Half of it was completely dark and pitch black. He wanted to rebuild it into a family home for us and our future kids. So every day, he would drive upstate to work on the barn, and I would walk the two miles in the snow to the nearest subway to go to my nannying job. In the evenings, we'd meet back at the barn. He'd work on architectural plans, and I'd write on my laptop to work on an essay or a song, or I'd work on my drawings. I had started selling my art for much-needed cash. I use pen and pencil for my drawings, and I love how graphite is actually a form of carbon. And carbon, when exposed to extreme heat and enormous pressure, becomes diamonds. I would think of this while I would be working on a drawing, while I would be pressing down on the page with a piece of charcoal or a pencil. Graphite, under enormous pressure, becomes art. Art is, after all, the act of turning pain into poetry. The winter shifted into the spring, and we moved out of the sailboat and into his VW bus, parked in front of the barn. We were living quite luxuriously, obviously. <laughs> These warmer months were good for us. I would run through the woods surrounding our barn, and he would work on the barn, and the days were long, and the work was hard, and this hard work tempered my husband's moods. He grew into a better man every time he felt like he had a clear purpose in life. It was when that purpose slipped away, or he let it slip away, that he would slip into shadow. Spring shifted into summer, summer into fall, and lo and behold, money for the barn ran out. My husband had a habit of using part of the monthly loan, which was meant for construction materials and hired labor. He would use it on drinking instead and on lavish dinners at different restaurants that he would go to by himself while I would be at my nannying job. He enjoyed going by himself because it would allow him the freedom to talk to the other people he'd find there, mainly other women. He would spend $100 here, 100 there, talking and laughing and flirting with other women while I was taking care of other people's children, working so hard to make pennies to support our life together. The further he let things slip away, the further he slipped into shadow. The further he slipped into shadow, the further I grew away from him and into my work. I started writing more. I started drawing more. My drawings became more dark 
more complex, and they improved. And soon, I was selling them for larger and larger amounts, beginning initially at $100, moving all the way up to $5,000. And with every sale, my husband grew both happy and resentful. 